This is chapter six of A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Neal. Chapter six. The wall will be standing in 50 and even in 100 years if the reasons for it are not removed. Eric Honecker, first secretary of East Germany, 1971 to 1989. It was a Beatles night. Fritz lay on his bed, staring at the ceiling, while I sat cross-legged on the floor with a book I had given up on reading. In the background, John, L John Lennon harmonized with Paul McCartney as they sang philosophies of love in a language I barely understood. If it weren't for the Beatles, I, would have n I wouldn't have known any English at all. For me, it's the lyrics. Fritz had taken an English course in school and spoke it much better than I did. The things they write could never be played here. Of course not, I said with a smile. It'd corrupt us. Personally, I preferred the tunes. Almost mostly, I liked the Beatles simply because we weren't supposed to like them. Or for that matter, even know about them. But all the kids did. Fritz's friends especially. The boys smuggled in albums we weren't supposed to have and pictures of shiny Ford Mustangs we'd never own. And the girls got fashion magazines and colorful beaded neck necklaces to hide under their mattresses. Even though she never dropped Fritz and wouldn't turn anyone in, Mama disapproved. She wanted us to buy the censored albums instead, but that missed the whole point of rock and roll. Nobody wanted approved mu music. I wondered if maybe Mama wasn't angry that I had seen Dominic. Maybe it made her sad, because nothing she could do would bring him home again. I never should have told her about Dom at supper, and never should have yelled. Fritz must have been thinking about that, too. Mama loves them as much as you do, Gerda. She misses them so much, it hurts her to talk about them. You can't be angry with her father that father wait what you can't be angry with her that father is gone he was right of course i didn't want to be angry but sometimes it was the only emotion i understood i missed my father singing at me at bedtime in the earthly smells of his coat before he left for work each morning sometimes he snuck a kiss from my mother when he thought no one was looking and it always made me giggle i even missed dominic the way he used to tease me and hide my dolls and jump out for from behind corners to, stare, to scare me. Those were good memories now. Our family was like a house of cards in a stiff wind, and when it became too much to feel the pain of our collapse, all I could do was become angry. We need to get to the west to be with them, I said. There's got to be a way through that wall. Of course there is, but the only way to know for sure is to try, and there's a high price for being wrong. Are you so certain there's a way through that you'd risk dying for it? I wanted to say yes, more than anything. I wanted to be the kind of person who dared to say yes. Papa would take the risk, maybe Fritz too, but I wasn't sure about myself. If I knew we'd make it, then yeah, I'd try to cross. Then I added, but that's all the bravery inside me. That's not how bravery works, Fritz said. Courage isn't knowing you can do something. It's only being willing to try. His voice trailed off to silence, and the record player spat out static in the gap before the next song began. The needle on the player was going dull. It would be a long time before Fritz lucked into finding another one. Shortages. Always shortages. Once the music began again, Fritz rolled over to face me and rested his chin on his hands. I gotta tell you something, he said. I wasn't going to, but if you really believe there's a way through the wall, you ought to hear this. I leaned forward, certain this was the secret he had kept from Mama at supper time. Do you know Peter Warner and his older brother? Sure. I didn't know him well because he was so much older. He was away at the university, but I saw him occasionally on weekends. At the, as the first in his family to attend the university, Peter made their parents very proud, and they, walked, and they talked about him all the time. Peter's going to the West tonight. Nobody knows about it but me. I sat up straight. Not even his family? They'll be furious. He hopes they'll understand and maybe even be happy for him. I paused, letting that sink in. Then I asked, how is he getting out? Some students in the West got a pass to come to East Berlin for a museum tour. They're going to smuggle him out in their car. It was specially designed just for that reason. I shook my head. It sounds dangerous. It is, but where we live, 
Walking can be dangerous. Talking is dangerous. For you and me, being the children of Aldislo is dangerous. And that's why he never sends letters, just because of who our father is. They probably watch you from the moment you step out of this apartment until you get inside again. If the chance came for me to leave the same way Peter is leaving, I'd take it. I left a pinch in my chest. I felt a pinch in my chest. It was one thing to think about Anna's brother leaving, but I couldn't imagine if Fritz left too. Would he just disappear, like Peter? I was about to ask when a knock came to our door. Fritz looked over at me and with a stern voice said, don't say a word about this. Don't make mother responsible for knowing. When I agreed, he got up and opened the door. Mama pushed past him and turned the volume down on the record player. They'll hear you on the streets. Not with the windows closed, Fritz said irritably. Besides, the police have better things to do than confiscate teenage music. And how do you know that? Only because they haven't come here yet to do it, that's all. Fritz nodded and then switched off the player. Neither of us were was enjoying it now anyway. Go off to bed, Gerda, Mama told me. You too, Fritz. I got up off the floor and gave Fritz a long look before leaving. Mama stopped me in the doorway and put her hands on my shoulders. I'm sorry I became upset before, she said. I was only worried that you might have been caught by one of the border guards. Can you understand that? Yes, that I understood. I'm glad you saw Dominic, she said. I wish I could have seen him too. He looked good, I said. He's as tall as Fritz is now, and he looked healthy. Did he seem happy? She asked. I didn't know how to answer that. He must have ached about the divide in our family, just as all of us here did. But he was also free, and I wasn't sure he would give that up, even to be back with us again. So I only shrugged the question away, which seemed enough for her. She kissed my forehead, then said, Now, good night, and sleep well. I wished her good night, too, but I knew there was no chance of sleeping well. Sometime in the next few hours, the brother of my best friend would vanish into the West. I whispered a prayer that God would see him there safely and then carry his family through the storm that was sure to follow his disappearance. That was chapter six of A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.